we have already seen that when a primary beam of x rays is incident on a sample, it can produce secondary x rays in the form of fluorescent k characteristic radiations. Since the characteristic radiations are very much a characteristics of the element concerned. Therefore, based on this phenomenon, there is a chemical analysis method that has been devised. That is known as chemical analysis by X-ray fluorescence. Now, when a material is used as an absorber of X rays, we have seen that if the intensity of the transmitted beam through the absorber is measured for bombardment by a large number of monochromatic waves of X rays, then for a any particular material, a characteristic edge absorption edge wavelength is obtained as shown over here. So, this is the variation of the mass absorption coefficient of nickel with wavelength when you bombard the strip of nickel with various wavelengths, a large number of wavelengths. Then for this particular element nickel, we find that there is what is known a k absorption edge wavelength here, which demarcates between region of high absorption and region of low absorption. Now, the k absorption edge wavelength is very much a characteristic of the absorbing element. So, based on this phenomenon, another chemical analysis method has been devised known as chemical analysis by X-ray absorption. In this method, if we have a number of elements in a sample, when it is bombarded with monochromatic wavelengths of different values, then it is quite possible that the k absorption edge wavelengths of the different elements present in the sample will be disclosed and by identifying those k absorption edge wavelengths, it is possible to identify the elements present within the sample. Now, the process can be done in a diffractometer in the following manner. Say we have an X-ray tube here, which produces both white radiation and characteristic radiation. Now, this white radiation is allowed to fall on an analyzing crystal and depending on the interplanar distances of the planes which lie parallel to the surface of the analyzing crystal and the angle of incidence and the wavelength, certain wavelength will from the white radiation will be diffracted following Bragg's condition of diffraction lambda is equal to 2 d sin theta. Now, that particular wavelength is allowed to pass through the sample and the transmitted intensity is recorded. So, we do it for a large number of wavelengths to be incident on the sample and in each case we measure the transmitted intensity. Then from the values of the transmitted intensities versus 
the wavelengths that are incident on the sample, we can find out the precise value of the k absorption edge wavelength or k absorption edge wavelengths. There is another method which is also used. Here from the x-ray tube, the primary x-ray beam is allowed to fall on a radiator. A radiator is nothing but an element which fluoresces its characteristic radiation by the impact of the primary x-ray beam. Now, this fluorescent radiation is allowed to fall on the analyzing crystal and the single, if the single wavelength fluorescent radiation, it will be diffracted at a particular setting of the angle theta and that is allowed to fall on the sample and the transmitted intensity is recorded in the counter. So, if we have a large number of elements having atomic number z, z plus 1, z plus 2, z plus 3, etcetera, etcetera. And if these are used as radiators, then we will have fluorescent x radiation of different wavelength and these will be allowed to fall on the analyzing crystal and finally, on the sample one after the other. So, in this way also, we can plot transmitted intensity versus theta card for the sample. Now, once we do that, this is the type of plot we obtain. This is the intensity of the transmitted beam and this is the wavelength of the incident radiation. Now, as you can see, there will be a gradual decrease in the intensity of the transmitted beam as the wavelength becomes shorter and shorter and then there will be an abrupt change indicating that the k absorption edge wavelength is here. Now, if we extrapolate these two parts of the curves and allow it to lie intersect the k absorption edge wavelength, then this intensity is the intensity just to the right of the absorption edge and this intensity over here represents the intensity just to the left of the k absorption edge wavelength. Now, based on the disclosure of absorption edge wavelengths, there has been a method for chemical analysis and this is known as the absorption edge method. And here as I have already explained, monochromatic x-ray beam is used. Now, if in the material we have got an element x and the rest of the elements are represented as r, we can write down for the mixture mu by rho m is equal to w x mu by rho x plus w r mu by rho r. w x is the weight fraction of x, w r is the weight fraction of r and mu by rho is the mass absorption coefficient, here it is the mass absorption coefficient for x and this is the mass absorption coefficient for r. Now, we can write down the transmitted intensity I as equal to I 0, the incident intensity into e to the power minus mu by rho m for the mixture, rho m the density of the mixture into T the thickness of the sample. If we consider the intensities I 1 and I 2 here, then we can also write down I 1 in this manner. I 1 will be I 0 the incident intensity to e to the power minus w x mu by rho x 1 that indicates that we are considering the intensity I 1 okay, at that level plus w r mu by rho r rho m t. Whereas, I 2 can be written as I 0 
e to the power minus w x mu by rho x 2 this corresponds to the transmitted intensity i 2 plus w r mu by rho r rho m t. Now, if we divide i 1 by i 2 it becomes e to the power w x mu by rho x 2 minus mu by rho x 1 multiplied by rho m into t. Let this quantity here be written as k subscript x and let rho m t here be written as l m. If that be the case, we can rewrite i 1 by i 2 as e to the power w x k x l m. Taking logarithm of both sides, we can write down l n i 1 by i 2 is equal to w x k x l m. So, from this equation it is quite clear that this part of the left hand side is a measurable quantity l n i 1 by i 2 k x can also be determined the mu by rho value at the two different places and l m is rho m into t the density and the thickness. So, that can also be measured. So, that from this equation we can easily find out the weight fraction of x. So, this method is known as the absorption edge method for chemical analysis. Now, here rho m is a density of the mixture. So, rho m is nothing but mass of the mixture or mass of the substance divided by its area into thickness mass per unit volume. This is for the sample. So, if we multiply by t then it will be simply mass per area of the sample. Now, rho m t has been written as L subscript m. So, if we write w x multiplied by L m it is actually mass of x per unit area of the sample. Now, the second method based on absorption of x rays is known as the direct absorption method. Now, here also we use a monochromatic beam of x rays. So, here the chemical analysis done considering the direct absorption. Here we do not look for the absorption edge wavelengths, but we measure it find out the chemical composition chemical analysis of an element directly from how much of the radiation is absorbed by the sample. Again we can write down for the sample mu by rho m is equal to w a mu by rho a plus w b mu by rho b where a and b are the elements which are present in the sample. So, since there is nothing else is present then w b is nothing but 1 minus w a because w a the weight fraction of a plus w b the weight fraction of b must be equal to 1. So, we can write mu by rho m is equal to w a mu by rho a plus 1 minus w a mu by rho b. Therefore, we can write the transmitted intensity i is equal to incident intensity i 0 e to the power minus w a mu by rho a plus 1 minus w a mu by rho b rho m t where rho m is the density of the sample and t is the thickness of the sample. Taking logarithm of both sides and then or taking the logarithm of i 0 by i rather we get ln i 0 by i will be w a mu by rho a plus 1 minus w a mu by rho b rho m t. Now, here mu by rho of a and b are known quantities rho m and t are also known. So, the only unknown is w a and on the left hand side these are measurable quantities. So, from this equation w a or weight fraction of a can be easily found out. There is still a third absorption method which is used for chemical analysis and that is known as direct absorption method polychromatic beam. You see 
when we deal with monochromatic beam, the chances of having an intense beam is much less. And after absorption, when we measure the transmitted intensity, uh, it may be very difficult to do so. That is the reason why in some method, we use what is known as the direct absorption method polychromatic beam. That means, here we use the white radiation that comes out from the X-ray tube along with the characteristic radiation. But in this case, we cannot set up these equations because we do not know which component of the polychromatic beam is passing through the sample. In fact, the setup in this case is we put the sample allow the polychromatic beam to fall on the specimen from the X-ray tube. On the other side, we have the counter to record the transmitted beam. So, in this cases where we are not, we do not, we cannot rather find out which particular wavelength is getting transmitted, we do it in a different way. We draw a calibration curve with the x axis intensity of the transmitted beam, how much is getting transmitted and weight percent of A along the x axis. That means, we take a large number of samples where the weight fractions of the other elements are fixed and weight fraction of A changes. So, several samples with different weight fractions of A we prepare and for each we undertake this experiment of polychromatic beam falling on a certain thickness of the sample and getting transmitted through it and getting recorded by the counter. So, if we do this experiment for a large number of samples where only the percentage or the weight fraction of A differs, everything else remains the same, then you can easily draw a calibration curve of intensity of transmitted beam versus weight percent A from the several samples. Now, if we have an unknown sample where weight percent of A is not known, then it is simply a question of finding out what is the transmitted intensity and then from this calibration curve, we can easily find out what is the weight fraction of A in the unknown sample. Now, to be of any practical use, we have to remember that you know you have the polychromatic beam from the same X-ray machine under similar condition to be incident on the different samples with different weight fraction of A. Not only that, the thicknesses of the different samples must be strictly the same. Then and then only this method will be successful. Now, one of the application of you know, the X-ray absorption is where we study diffusion. You see, in diffusion couple experiments, this kind of experiments are very useful. Say for example, we have got two metals A and B joined together over here and this diffusion couple, if it is kept at a sufficiently high temperature for quite some time, what we will find that atoms of A will move over to B, they will diffuse to B. Similarly, atoms of B will diffuse and move over to A. So, when a steady state condition will be reached, we should be able to figure out how the concentration of A varies from as a function of the distance x and how the concentration of B varies as a function of the distance x. Now, the way it is done is this. Say for example, if we take slices parallel to the y z section at different values of x and then use those samples for the analysis of 
concentration of A and concentration of B, then from that data we can draw curves for the concentration of A versus X and concentration of B versus X. Well, using this extra absorption method, we can do it on a single section. Say for example, in this diffusion couple, if we take a section like this, which is in the, this section, which is in the x z section actually, is parallel to the x z section. We cut a single slice from here after the materials have diffused and then we use this as the sample in a diffractometer in this manner where we have x rays, primary x rays incident on a radiator and the fluorescent beam falls on the analyzing crystal and the monochromatic beam falls over here and if this sample is given movement in negative x and negative y and if the slit is rather narrow, then as a function of x we can find out what are the values of concentration of A and concentration of B. So, what is done? You know the sample is kept in a particular position for sufficiently long time, so that sufficient uh, transmitted intensity is obtained here. Then the sample is moved say slightly towards the right and again this X-ray narrow X-ray beam is allowed to fall over there and we get the transmitted intensity. If this is done at several places along plus X and minus X, then from those using those equations here, we can find out what are the concentrations of A and B atoms as a function of X and then we can plot it in this fashion. So, we will see that concentration of A will vary in this fashion and concentration of B will vary in this fashion. So, this is a very good application of chemical analysis by X-ray absorption. Now, you see the application of this method is possible only when we can have a measurable amount of transmitted intensity and that is the reason why the material to be examined must be very, very thin. Not only that, uh, it must have low absorption coefficient. That is the reason why in industry nowadays, uh, this method is used only for organic liquids and some other materials which are of low absorption coefficient.